The very first expression of God that we read in the Bible was the command, Let there be light. And as you continue to read through the scriptures, this command and call for light comes up again and again. In the Old Testament, Isaiah declared that in order to spread salvation, God's people need to be a light to the Gentiles. In the New Testament, 1 John 1.7 tells us to be in the light as He is in the light. So we're called to be lights. But what does this really mean? And what does this look like in our culture today? We are living in a time when Christian values are no longer shared by our culture at large. Motivated by fear with all of the evil that is present, many Christians have come to think that being lights means being at war against the dark. In efforts to gain control, some people put all the blame on the dark for being dark and don't show the sympathy, compassion, and love that Christ demonstrated through His incarnation. The judgmental approaches taken by Christians have turned people away from finding fulfillment in their Creator, and instead they seek fulfillment through other means. But returning to the default mode of selfishness, many find that money, success, and popularity will continually leave them dissatisfied. Through human experience, it is evident that the more we center our lives on ourselves, the emptier we feel. We have an inherent longing to live for something greater. The problem with many Christians today is we are often just as driven by money, success, and popularity as everyone else. But when the world sees that there are people who achieve deep satisfaction from a source beyond understanding, there will be more people drawn to the light of the gospel. And when the world can see the transformational power of a people motivated by love, self-denial, grace, and hope, the more God's glory will be shown. As Christians, we need to remember that the best way to dispel darkness is to shine light. Because in reality, darkness is just the absence of light. So instead of attacking the darkness from a place of fear, we need to let the light of the gospel radically transform our lives and place our complete trust in God, knowing that He is in control. As Jesus indicates in Matthew 5.16, our best defense to the dark is to let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This was said shortly after he called his followers to be meek, merciful, pure in heart, and to serve as peacemakers. And by living a life of self-denial, holiness, generosity, and compassion to the poor, we redeem our culture and lift up the right way to be human. And as a result, God will be glorified. And when we can live a life that is not motivated by selfish ambitions or worldly treasures, we point to the true source of fulfillment and God's glory is proclaimed. This is how Christians can dispel darkness and bring light into the world. In 2 Corinthians 4, 6, Paul reminds us that God said, Let there be light in the darkness. And God has made this light shine in our hearts so that we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Christ. So by staying continually charged by this transformational source of hope, the darkness may be present, but God's glory will continue to glow.